and welcome to Rina Speaks. And in this BNF bite size style video, I will be covering antidepressants and comparing selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors to tricyclic antidepressants. I hope you find this video useful. And if you do, please do hit that like button, share, subscribe, and do visit my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So psychosocial interventions may be offered to an individual with depression, for example, cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on antidepressant medication, and there are several different classes of antidepressants, some which I've already mentioned. So the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs, the tricyclic antidepressants or TCAs, and the monoamine oxidase inhibitors or MAUs. So in terms of efficacy, they are all pretty similar. So choice regarding which antidepressant would be most suitable for a particular patient usually comes down to few individual factors and requirements of that patient. So do they have any existing comorbidities or conditions? Do they take any other medication? Um, assessing their suicide risk. And if the patient has previously taken an antidepressant, um, and if they have, then how effective or ineffective was that antidepressant for them? With antidepressant medication, it's important to counsel patients that, especially for the first few weeks of starting treatment, they may experience an increase in anxiety and agitation. But after a few weeks, this should subside. Um, suicidal thoughts can also be experienced during those first few weeks and again these should subside but it is important for an individual to talk to a healthcare professional if they do experience this. Where necessary patients should be monitored for suicidal behaviour or self-harm particularly if starting an antidepressant or changing if there is a change in dose. And for patients who have been initiated an antidepressant and are not considered to be a, at, at an increased risk of suicide, then a GP or a specialist should review the patient after at least two weeks. So if you are um, dispensing and counselling and giving out an antidepressant to a patient and it's the first time they're taking it, do you make sure to check that do they have a, an appointment with their GP or specialist in the next week or two? Treatment should be continued for at least four weeks or even six weeks in the case of elderly patients. And at this point, if efficacy is a concern, then a switch to a different antidepressant may then be considered. So generally speaking, SSRIs tend to be first line treatment option. And TCAs, although they have a similar efficacy to SSRIs, it has been found that they are more likely to be discontinued because of problematic side effects. SSRIs also have fewer antimuscarinic and cardiotoxic effects, which means that if a patient has a history of unstable angina or they've suffered a recent myocardial infarction, then sertraline, which is an SSRI, has been shown to be safe in these individuals. Toxicity and overdosage also tends to be a problem with TCAs. For example, amitriptyline is a, an example of a TCA, but it isn't recommended to be used in major depression because of that increased risk of fatality in overdose. SSRIs are less sedating than TCAs and TCAs can vary in their degree of sedation. Some are more sedating, some are less sedating. So examples of those that are more sedating are amitriptyline, clomipramine, trazodone, for example, and those that are less sedating include imipramine and nortriptyline. With SSRIs, they are associated, associated with an increased risk of bleeding. So this is especially the case in elderly patients or those who are taking other medication which has the potential to damage GI mucosa or interfere with clotting. So for example, if someone is taking, is regularly taking an NSAID, um, in these situations, you may find that a patient has also been prescribed a gastroprotective drug such as omeprazole 2. Hyponatremia has been associated with all types of antidepressants. However, it has been reported more frequently with SSRIs. So patients should be counseled to look out for any signs of drowsiness or confusion whilst taking an antidepressant. So before we go any further, if you are looking for a quiz which can tell you straight away if you got an answer right or wrong that covers every chapter in the BNF as well as over-counter scenario questions, then Clinical Quizzical is 
for you. The link is in the description box below. I've also got a demonstration video, so I will include that link in the description box too, so go and check it out. Now let's talk about serotonin syndrome, which is an uncommon adverse drug reaction, but again, it's one that patients should be counselled on. It is caused by excessive central and peripheral serotonergic activity. Symptoms can vary in severity and can occur within a few hours to, or even days following initiation of an SSRI or an increase in dose, or trialing a different SSRI without tapering off the previous medication in the recommended timescale. And there are three main um, characteristic symptoms of serotonin syndrome, neuromuscular hyperactivity, autonomic dysfunction, and an altered mental state. So starting off with neuromuscular hyperactivity, this can include tremors or involuntary muscle spasms. With autonomic dysfunction, this can include change to blood pressure, shivering, or diarrhea. And an altered mental state can include agitation or confusion. So what I used to find helpful was that um, if I had a patient who was newly prescribed an antidepressant or had a change in their um, antidepressant medication, I would print off for them um, from the NHS website guidance on side effects of antidepressants. And I would find that this would be particularly helpful for patients because when they're starting a new medication such an antidepressant it can feel really overwhelming being bombarded with information particularly when it's about side effects so if a patient knows that they have something that they can refer to and read at their own pace then the idea is that hopefully it can then alleviate some of that sense of feeling overwhelmed so if a patient is initiated with an SSRI but they fail to respond to treatment there's a few options so the dose of that SSRI might be increased, they might be switched to a different SSRI, or they might be changed to metazapine. And it's important to note that there would be a cross tapering. So that dose of an SSRI would be reduced as the metazapine would be um, introduced and the dose would increase accordingly. So it wouldn't be the case that SSRI would be abruptly stopped and then metazapine straight away um, started. That would be really unlikely. It's important that an SSRI is tapered down and reduced and that the metazapine is then increased slowly as well at the same time. And that's what we mean by cross tapering. So other second line choices include lefepramine, meclobamide and riboxetine. And if a patient doesn't respond to a second antidepressant, then they may need to add another antidepressant from a different class. For more severe forms of depression, venlafaxine or another tricyclic antidepressant may be considered. Irreversible mouths should only be prescribed by a specialist. Speaking of mouths, they interact with many different foods and medicines. So food-wise, examples include tyramine-rich foods, such as aged cheeses, cured meats, smoked fish and meat, um, marmite, some alcoholic beverages, and even alcohol-free beers and wines. So it's really important that patients are counselled properly. In terms of stopping one antidepressants and starting another when it comes to treatment with mouths, so if a mal has been stopped, Another antidepressant should not really be started for at least two weeks after that treatment has been stopped or three weeks if starting clomipramine or imipramine. And a mal should not be started until at least seven to 14 days after stopping a TCA. Again, three weeks if stopping with clomipramine or imipramine. So if a patient is on clomipramine or imipramine and that is stopped, then that mal should not be started for at least seven to 14 days. And a mouse should not be started for at least one week after an SSRI has been stopped or five weeks in the case of fluoxetine. So unlike with um, SSRIs and metazapine, you would have that cross tapering. Actually with mouse, depending on if they're being started or um, if they're being stopped, then it is important that there is that um, gap depending on which medication may be started or stopped accordingly. Um, and again, it's very unlikely that with antidepressants in general, they would be stopped abruptly. That dose would probably be reduced or tapered over a certain period of time. And then, for example, with the case of a MAL and an SSRI, then there would be a week of not taking anything and then an SSRI started. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped highlight some of those key differences between the different classes of antidepressants, particularly SSRIs and TCAs, and that you feel more confident in counselling patients who are newly initiated on an antidepressant or have had a change in their dose or medication treatment. So until next time, good luck with your revision and happy revisings! Thank you.